All right, just going to answer two very serious errors taught by Brian Dunlinger regarding divorce, okay? Now, let me just first say this, okay? There is scriptural grounds for divorce in the Bible, okay, in the New Testament, okay? There is grounds for divorce. It's not like this Roman Catholic thing where there's just divorce is never allowed no matter what, okay? That is heresy, okay? There is scriptural grounds for divorce, okay? But the reasons that Brian gives, okay, he's basically condoning divorce or encouraging divorce for unscriptural reasons, okay? Now, in one of the clips, he doesn't out openly say he kind of implies it, but in the other clip, he strongly implies it, okay? I'm going to show you the first clip uh, where he is encouraging divorce. This is from a sermon called uh, What About Interracial Marriage Part 2. Now, let me first say this, okay? Interracial marriage is a very serious sin. Okay, interracial marriage is is a wicked perversion in the eyes of God. Okay, you can read about that in, in Ezra chapter 9, Ezra chapter 10, Nehemiah 13, Nehemiah 9, Nehemiah 10, all throughout the Old Testament. Okay, interracial marriage is a very wicked sin in the eyes of God. Okay, but interracial marriage is not grounds for divorce. And you're going to see that he kind of implies that if there's an interracial couple that are saved, if they want to get a divorce, it's between them and God or something. You know, watch this. Okay. You say, well, we're, we're a mixed kindred, you know, we're a mixed couple. What, what are you suggesting? Are you suggesting we get a divorce? Uh, well, that's between you and God. I'm not going to say one way or another. So you're saying, oh, it's between you and God. So he's, he's not outright saying it, but he's implying it, okay? No, okay, I'm going to show you after I play the second clip of the scriptural grounds for divorce. Interracial marriage is not grounds for divorce. It's not between you and God, okay? If there is an interracial couple, they did it before they got saved, they're wrong for doing it, okay? Interracial marriage, again, is a very serious, wicked sin. They're wrong for doing it. However, it's not grounds for divorce, okay? Here's a second clip where he tries to say that if your wife wants, doesn't want to live off-grid, then you should divorce her or something like that. Again, nowhere, nowhere in Scripture is that grounds for divorce. So here's the second clip. And the reason why I'm doing this is because, you know, people have tried to correct Brian and Brian is just, he's arrogant and he won't just, he doesn't take correction on anything. Okay. The reason why people come up with videos on Brian is number one, it's hard to contact Brian. Okay? He doesn't take phone calls, doesn't take emails. I uh, won't let people come visit him. So it's really hard to contact him. So you're kind of forced to have to do a video because you write him a letter and it doesn't get responded to for like several months. I mean, months or even a year so it's hard to contact a guy he very seldomly responds to youtube comments and comments that disagree with him often get deleted by his moderators because we can't tolerate any disagreements with the cult leader with the pope so that's why you kind of forced to have to do a video because that's the only way you can respond to him really and try to correct him but even then you know he's got a lot of pride issues and he's very arrogant and just he doesn't take correction on anything so and that's also why people leave his call too. People don't leave because we love our sin or we're just trying to justify sin. No, people like me and Tim and others have left because Brian is just arrogant and prideful and puffed up and high-minded and he won't take correction or proof on anything. And his little cultic followers will just call you lost and dismiss you as a wicked devil if you try to correct Brian. Basically, you have to be wrong because Brian is never wrong, apparently. Ridiculous. But here's the clip where he encourages... Sort of, sort of implies and encourages almost divorce if the wife wants to live off grid, and or sorry, if you want to live off grid and the wife doesn't want to. Okay, again, nowhere is it stated in the scripture, but here, here you go. Scared, and I, I have a cabin in the mountains, and I've always wanted to go there and live there full time, but my wife, she's just, she, we, she just plainly said, no, I will not do that. I will never move there. And what does the Bible say? Well, back in the book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 19, it says it's better to dwell in the wilderness than with an angry woman, angry and contentious woman. You say, well, then you're saying I should leave my wife? Well, let's see what the New Testament has to say. And bear with me. Also, I covered this in my other video on this particular sermon, is that, you know, he's almost trying to guilt trip his people into living off grid, okay? I've said before, I would love to live off grid, quite frankly. I don't like living in the city. It's, you know, very vexing, very wicked. Uh, I go out in public and I see all kinds of just de degeneracy and just wicked sin and just all kinds of immorality. Okay, I don't like living in the city. I would love to live in the country, just live off grid where it's very peaceful or whatever. I understand country and off grid, not always the same thing, but um, 
care what I'm saying, but not everyone's in the position where they can. Not everyone's in the financial position, the physical condition, or even just the just the general condition uh, to live off grid and just drop everything they're doing. Okay, I have a job. I work. You know, I can't just drop everything I'm doing and live off grid. I'd like to, but I can't. But you see, Brian, he doesn't have a, you know a job where he has a schedule. He lives off donations. Okay. And again, it is scriptural to support a ministry. I'm not saying that supporting a ministry is scriptural, but Brian does not have like a job, like a boss he reports to, okay? He just lives off donations. So it's very easy for him to just, you know, move here, move there, pack up, you know, just go wherever, you know? But try doing that when you have a full-time job you gotta worry about, when you have other stuff you gotta worry about, okay? So again, he's guilt tripping his people into doing things that some of them, like myself, would like to do but they're not always in the condition where they can. They're not in Brian's position where they just live off donations too, where they, you know, receive money from the body of Christ and live off that and don't actually work. Like, you know, if you read Acts chapter 18, verse three, Paul was a tent maker, okay? And I don't have time to get into that, but Paul actually worked for a living. He didn't just live off donations, but that's a whole other issue. But just wanted to point that out. So he's guilt tripping his people, but he goes on to basically try to sit, try to read from uh, 1 Corinthians 7, and try to say that, try to link the two where, you know, if the unbelieving spouse departs, then he's trying to link it with living off grid. It's really weird. I covered, again, I covered that in my other video, but let's see what he says. Okay, don't jump to conclusions. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. You might be saved man, and, and you have a lost wife, and she is pleased to be with you, and whatever, then don't divorce her. Now you see, what he's trying to do is he's trying to mix the two together. He's trying to say, well, uh, if your spouse is unbelieving, you know, because again, 1 Corinthians 7 is talking about, you know, uh, believing spouse versus or with an unbelieving spouse and basically saying you know that if the unbelieving spouse wants to leave and just you know let him, let him or her leave but then if the uh spouse wants to stay then just you know stay with them that kind of thing but he's trying to link that in with living off grid it's, it's really weird what he tries to do again i covered that in my other video but i'm just gonna skip ahead to about 39 minutes and 22 seconds he further implies that you should get a divorce if you're living off grid which is again uh heresy false doctrine this is just local what if it becomes national they're talking about operation dark winter you can look into that military operations for if the power goes down <sighs> what are you going to do you say well okay maybe if everything just goes goes on i'm not i don't get into this doom and gloom conspiracy stuff okay fine what about civil unrest that we've already seen in this country People that have lost everything that were living in the city had their business. Yeah, but again, those people actually had jobs, okay? They didn't just live off donation money like you do, okay? So, like, you can't really compare. Again, it's just ridiculous. It's burned down by a bunch of people, be Black Lives Matter, Antifa, whatever other satanic organizations. What about that? You know? Uh, yeah, what about that? Yeah, those people weren't living off donations. They actually had work they would go to. They would have a scheduled job, they have a schedule they gotta keep, and then these, these wicked Satanists from Black Lives Matter and Antifa come and burn their business down, which, you know, Black Lives Matter and Antifa, they're a wicked um, satanic movement. I don't have time to go into that, but they actually have jobs, okay? So you can't you can't compare. It's ridiculous to try to compare the two. Um, you say, have you ever uh, advised a brother or sister to divorce their husband or wife? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I've gone through some of the agony with some of the brethren where they tell me they're crying and they're saying, brother, I'm trying everything I can to keep my marriage together. I don't want to divorce. I don't want to go through that. We have children. I don't want them to go through this. But I have a wife that's lost. I have a husband that's lost. What am I supposed to do? If you're not pleased to dwell together, and you want to get out to a place like this, you want to get out here to where there's peace, ask for the old paths, and ye shall find rest for your souls. You want to get out here if you're a man, and you have a cabin someplace, 
some land and it's a beautiful place. That's where you find your peace at. And you have a wife that's contentious and angry. And she will not change her mind. Leave her. Now you see what he, he just did there. Okay, He mixed the two together. He, the, the verse in 1 Corinthians 7 was about an unbelieving spouse versus a believing spouse. It has nothing to do with living off grid. But he mixed the two together and says, if your spouse is unbelieving and you want to live off grid, then divorce her or him. You know, obviously it's about her, but um, okay, twisting what the verse is saying. It's not talking about living off grid. He's again, he's just trying to lump the two together and try to create this false doctrine. Okay, no, living off grid does not grounds for divorce, not one way. Okay, let me show you the word of God. Okay, there are scriptural grounds for divorce, like I said at the beginning of the video, but living off grid and interracial, the serious wicked sin of interracial marriage, well, it is a wicked sin, interracial marriage. That's not grounds for divorce, and neither is living off grid. Okay, again, I'd like to live off grid, but I can't, you know, just if I was married, I can't just leave my wife, you know, if I was married. Obviously, I'm not, but um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 31. Uh, it, it hath been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Verse 32. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committeth adultery. Okay? So divorce plus remarriage is adultery, except if fornication, okay? If there's fornication, if one of the spouse commits fornication, if the spouse, either one, commits fornication, then you can leave him or her, okay? Fornication is grounds for divorce, not interracial marriage, not the sin of interracial marriage, and not living off grid, okay? So that's what's going on there. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 9. But I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. So again, you see this thing, divorce plus remarriage is adultery. Okay? But again, what's the exception for, you know, what's the exception for divorce? It's fornication. Okay? Not about interracial marriage or living off grid. And I'll show you uh, 1 Corinthians 7. What's going on there? 1 Corinthians chapter 7. So it's talking about principles of marriage. I'll start at verse 1. Not concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Verse 2. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. You know, good verse to use against professing Christians who say that same-sex marriage is okay, okay? Marriage in the Bible is strictly man and woman, one man, one woman, okay? So same-sex marriage and polygamy are not uh, right in the eyes of God. They're forbidden. They're wicked, okay? But then you go down to verse, I think it's verse, I can't remember the verse he quoted. Uh, yeah, verse 13, that's the one he was looking for. It's actually, no, it was verse 12, sorry. Verse 12. It says, 1 Corinthians 7, 12, But to, to the rest I speak not, sorry, speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she is pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Okay? So what's going on is that if the spouse, if you have a wife who is unsaved, she's an unbeliever, okay, but she wants to live with you, there's, the marriage is going fine, there's no problems, and she wants to live with you, okay, just stay with her, okay? You don't leave her. Verse 13, and the woman which hath a husband that believeth not, and if he be or if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. So same thing, if the husband is an unbeliever, uh, it could be an atheist or whatever, or uh, just even a non-believer, just any kind of non-believer, I'll just put it that way. Um, but he, he's okay, he's happy dwelling with you. Okay, stay with him. Okay, verse 14, for the unbelieving wife is saying, Unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Elsewhere, your children are unclean, but how are how sorry now are they holy? Then look at verse fifteen. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. Okay, what's going on there? It's believing versus unbelieving. Okay, if the unbelieving spouse is not pleased to dwell with you. Okay, if they're causing you problems, they're making all kinds of issues, and he wants to depart, let him depart, or let her depart. Okay, you're not under bondage, you're not under bondage in such cases. It's not this Roman Catholic thing where you just it's the death of your partner no matter what goes on. No, there is scriptural grounds for divorce. But where is anything about living off grid? 
Okay, he, again, he tried to lump the two together where if your spouse is unbelieving and you want to come and live off-grid, no, it's not, not anywhere in the text, okay? There's nothing about off-grid living anywhere in 1 Corinthians 7, verses 1 to 16, okay? So Brian twisted the scriptures, and I did this video because, again, he won't take correction on anything. And people will try to correct him, and he won't take it, so it's public, you know, public attempt to reprove, you know, and... It's an admonition, all that stuff. Heretic after the first and second admonition, reject. However, when it comes to correcting false doctrine, that's a whole different thing, okay? Admonishing a heretic is you go to them, you try to correct them, but if they don't take correction, you reject them. However, if you're correcting a heresy someone taught, that's a whole different issue, okay? Uh, so I just want to point that out. So divorce, he tried to say that interracial marriage and living off greatest grounds for divorce, not scriptural at all, okay? It's heresy, and I had to do this video because He's going to get you thinking that to go beyond the scriptural grounds for divorce, the biblical grounds for divorce. Okay, what he said was not scriptural; it was not right. Okay, so I just wanted to do that. Do that. Don't fall prey to this doctrine. Okay, just want to show you that. So, just showing you that Brian Dillinger still teaches error. Okay, some of his followers just idolize him and just seem to think he's just above, you know, reproof or correction. He's never wrong. Just showed you where he's wrong on two different videos. So, anyway. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.